you guys will not believe what I just found out. Don't let his looks deceive you. Popthorn is a devil worshipper. I really hate the way he smiles at you. He knows something that we don't. Well, despite being a demonic hell monster, Popthorn is a very strong character and one of the fan favourites for sure. And since he's so popular, and I hate to be that one anti-Satanist, today's basically goes straight to him. So with no further ado, let's master our Popthorn skills. Uh, basically. I think it's safe to say that Popthorn was one of the Swap Force Skylanders that stood out the most. Compared to some of the other cores, Popthorn looks a lot more interesting, and his playstyle is unique, but still easy to use. And of course you can't forget that the Antichrist was all the rage back in 2013. So I think it's no surprise that he was a big hit when the game first came out. So first let's take a look at his backstory. Who knows? Maybe a dark past might give us some insight into how he became so evil? If you couldn't already tell, Popthorn is a spiky boy. And unfortunately, that led to his entire race being used as combs for giant trolls. Uh, anyways, one day, a certain Pufferthorn called Popthorn stood up to the giant trolls. I mean, if I were a comb, I wouldn't be that happy either. So Popthorn defeated the giant trolls, and his species were no longer combs. And so he was recruited by Eon, blah blah blah, end of story. Well, funnily enough, I actually did find what I was looking for. I now know that Popthorn spent most of his life being a comb slave. Working in that line of business could turn anyone insane. Well anyways, it's about time that we talk about Popthorn's really interesting moveset. For Popthorn's first attack, he fires spiky missiles from his back. These spikes automatically target enemies, which means that you don't have to aim whatsoever. They're also very easy to spam, and you can move around normally while using them. So overall, this is a very solid attack. But then things start to get more interesting with this second attack. <laughs> when you press the second attack in your normal form, you release a massive gust of wind, and this then turns you into your smaller form. When in your small form, you move a whole lot faster. So in a sticky situation, it's probably best to go into this form. If you use your secondary attack while you're in the small form, you shoot out smaller streams of clouds. These don't do a whole lot of damage, but they're pretty long ranged and very fast. Using the primary attack in this form will puff you back up to normal size. This also damages enemies and knocks them back. Which form you should pick completely depends on your situation. The small form is mainly used against large groups of enemies, because the clouds can hit multiple enemies at once. So on the other side of that, if you're facing off against only a couple of big enemies, then the puffed form is the best. This is mainly because the missiles don't require aiming, which means that you're not taking any risks by attacking. The first upgrade increases the power of the small form's cloud breath, which is a lot more important than you might think. The small form's whole thing is that it's small and fast, but doesn't do that much damage. So a power increase is very helpful. The next upgrade unlocks one of your third attacks. As you might have expected, both of his forms have separate third attacks. For the puff forms third attack, you do a front flip and slam the ground in front of you. This is a pretty decent attack, it covers a lot of area and it knocks enemies back quite a bit. One thing to note is to not use this attack on big enemies that don't get knocked back. Without the knockback, Popthorn is left very vulnerable after using this attack, so just be careful of that. The next upgrade is a pretty basic one. It just lets you shoot out your spike missiles a lot faster. But then the upgrade after that, that's when things get interesting. We now have the small form's third attack, and 
Hmm, explosive feces. Well, as strange as it is, this is actually a very strong move. So when you're waddling around, you can leave behind you these spiky mines, which explode after a couple of seconds. There are two things in particular that make this attack really good. First of all, to fit with the small form's playstyle, placing these mines does not slow you down. This means that you can go around placing these bombs and still move at the same speed. And the second thing is the knockback. If an enemy gets hit by one of these, it sends them flying into the air. So this move is perfect for those moments where you're in a really tight spot and there are tons of enemies behind you. And now we are faced with the split paths. With the top path focusing on the puffed form and the bottom path focusing on the small form. So not only do we have to figure out which path is better, but we also have to figure out which form is better. This is a pretty big moment. But first of all, let's have a look at these upgrades. Up first is the top path. The first upgrade is basically an extension of your third attack. Now when you charge up the attack, you do a bunch of forward rolls and then your ground slam. Honestly, the only use I really found out of this is for extra mobility. Sadly, it doesn't really add much to the move itself. But the roll can be helpful for dodging, so at least it has that. The next upgrade increases the damage of your puff attack. And by that I mean when you're in small form and then you puff back up to big form. Along with the damage buff, it now also deflects projectiles. With this upgrade, the puff attack actually deals quite a lot of damage, and you kinda just end up using this move without realising it all the time, so making it really strong is a good upgrade. And for the final upgrade of this path, now when an enemy hits you in puffed form, you'll shoot out a missile that attacks them. I'm getting serious thump smash vibes from this. Oh yeah, and it's not good. I feel like this missile just isn't substantial enough. It only deals a little bit more damage than a normal projectile would. You just kind of expect it to be a little bit more helpful, but it ends up being kind of pathetic. Well that's the top path finished, and it's not looking good. I feel like for so many Skylanders, they have one upgrade path that tries something new and ambitious, but completely fails. And the top path is exactly that. The first two upgrades for this path are fine, but the final one is clearly meant to be really cool, but ends up just being a massive disappointment. Hopefully the bottom path can do a little bit better. The first upgrade for the bottom half is a different extension to your third attack. For this version of the third attack, now when you charge it up, you'll do three consecutive ground slams which deal more damage each time. When it comes to power, this is the better version but I still prefer the top pass version because it lets you zoom around pretty quickly. I will admit though, both of the first upgrades are pretty good. Okay, so I now wanted the next two upgrades which are focused on the unpuffed form. You know how when you go from puffed form to small form, you release a big gust of wind? Well, how about three gusts of wind? That's right, for the middle upgrade, you now release three gusts of wind instead of just one. Just like both of the first upgrades for these paths, the middle upgrades are also connected. They both revolve around switching forms. And as I said for the top path, you switch forms so often that it doesn't even feel like you're using this attack. What I'm trying to say is, me likey. And for the final upgrade of this path, instead of shooting one small gust of wind, yep, you guessed it, now you're shooting free. Triple the big gusts, Triple the small gusts. I'm getting a bit tired of saying the word gust. I have to say, while the top path does do something a little bit more ambitious for the final upgrade, this makes you a god. To be honest, this small form was already overpowered before this upgrade. Before this upgrade. This makes the small form even better against groups of enemies, but it's also good against single enemies because as long as you can get close enough, all three of your projectiles will hit. Meaning that you basically just do three times the amount of damage. I mean, if you get this amount of power, I should probably join a cult as well. So, 
Which path is better? Hmm. I'm gonna be straight with you guys. Popthorn is another Skylander that has one path that is clearly superior. The only thing I prefer from the top path is the first upgrade. If those two first upgrades were swapped around, the bottom path would probably be the best in every way. But still, as I said, the third attack on the bottom path is still alright. And especially with that final upgrade, it doesn't even matter. Sure, you can pick the top path, if you have no respect for me. So yeah, I guess I'm saying that the small form is better than the big form. Of course, that doesn't mean you should spend the entire time as that stupid little frog. The puffed form still has its value, even without the top path. But I think we have a clear winner here. So if you pick the bottom path like good boys and girls, congratulations, Pop Thorn has reached his full potential. Actually, not quite. There's still one thing we haven't looked at yet. With Pop Thorn's Soul Gem, you unlock the highest god tier status possible. Ultra, Radon, Glowing, Neon, Awesome mode. Yeah, it just makes you a bit shiny. This simply just gives your puffed form more defense and your small form even more speed. I will admit this soul gem does give pop form a little bit more strategy. When you're in a really intense situation where you're bound to get hurt, the puff form is the way to go as you'll be able to tank more damage. But when you want to terrorize everybody, yeah. So now for that classic question we've all been waiting to ask. Is pop form good? Eh, uh, yeah. Duh. Have you even been watching this video? Popthorn is an incredibly, incredibly solid character, which is why I'm giving him an 8.5 out of 10. I love the complexity of his moveset, I love his design, I love how he can make everybody disappear. He's really got it all. <laughs> this guy is really good. <laughs> Cook <Cook-crush race. laughs> He's, I mean, I mean, he's just so. <clears throat> I'm from the cult, and you know too much. Hey, no, that's not how this works. Don't you hate when that happens?